We're gonna go look, we're gonna go show you guys the compressor now, how it works. Compressor time. This looks like the original pedestal too that it's sitting on. They've redone the blocking. So, we've got Westinghouse Company Hamilton Canada synchronous motor, 602 horsepower, 2000 volts, 60 cycles, 300 RPM, three phase, polyphase, patented 1899. This was where Tesla came in. This is his work, armature and the stator. This was Tesla's work, right guys? Westinghouse, he worked for Westinghouse around that time. This is the ropes, rope driven. So the electric generator spins the wheel, right? Which spins the ropes because it's, you've got such a long extension of rope. These help guide it over to this wheel, this big wheel. And then this wheel is what drives the compressor. This wheel moves, this piston goes in and out, compresses, moves the air into the volume tank up there. There's a pressure relief spout down there. And then this is where the air would come out to the mines. The back of the compressor, two chambers. You got the pressure valve, needle valve to help regulate it. This is the, uh, the outflow. This is the two pistons. It's got a wheel, that big wheel. It was like 20 feet driven by all of this, the electric motor. And they said they needed a priming motor to start it because this motor couldn't start itself. So this is the auxiliary, the induction motor, variable speed, 85 horsepower, 2000 volts, 60 cycles per second. Tesla, 60 cycles per second. He was the guy with the AC transmission or he figured 60 cycles per second was the optimum way to transmit power. So this is the auxiliary motor. This auxiliary motor, you can see the gears. I'll go on the other side here. Induction motor. You fire this up here. It turns these gears, these spur gears. That's a spur gear. It turns these spur gears which spins the armature, which generates power around the stator. At the same time, spinning these wheels that move these cables, that pumps air for the compressor, which then gets sent out to the mine, which is how they would do all their stoping. These are the transformers that the power came from, from the dam, Bonington Falls. Power transmission line. We've got the transmission lines here, those spurs that we saw for climbing. Transmission line poles. You can see the insulators. We saw those from the different dams. These initially came from Greenwood. These are the transformers. They upstep current and downstep it. 20 kilovolts. You can see it there, 2,200 volts. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was either Pittsburgh or Hamilton is where these are gonna be built. They're riveted too. But these are the transformers, guys. These came from Greenwood and they were operational until 86 when they stopped working. And they're now part of the museum exhibit. But you can see, so, the power would have come from Bonington Falls to here to the transformers. It's got so much power in it. It would be downstepped to a workable voltage. So it could power the auxiliary, which then turns on the main generator, which spins the wheel with the ropes, the guide wheels too, on the frame. That moves the pistons, that charges the volume tank, which then we have the valves on the back for metering the pressure flow to get up to the mine to power the, the mining equipment. So that's in a nutshell how it works. You see little little bucket there? We we'll call those a pork barrel. But you can see the old foundation of the building. This was what they wanted. We saw the Silversmith power station in Sandin. That was all for the compressors, the slow can star mine. They wanted to power the compressors. There's a theme here. Silver, gold, ore. All of this was vital to the construction of the new world. These places were some of the first places in the world to have electric power. 1897 where he figured out the AC transmission voltages and hertz per second, all of it. We've done a pretty good job here covering this all, right? I'll give show you guys the cables a little bit. The shivs, that's a shiv. That's also a shiv. All of these wheels you see, right? These are called shivs. 3,000 cubic feet at 100 pounds. That's pretty good. You see the wheel, the size of it, it's huge. Compressor, piston. This was the machine, one of the machines, that AC system was powering. Because the problem was is DC works good, but you can't transmit it over long distances. And their biggest problem was they were starting to have problems. It, it works fine if you're like right there and you need the power now. And DC is good for a lot of applications, but when it comes to transmitting power at long range, it doesn't really work well. So we covered the rope drive compressor. Now we're on to belt drive. So let's take a look at this baby. See the belt? This thing right here, this is the belt. This would have been the motor that drives the belt. Electricity. Very, 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 very important. Volume tanks and chambers for compressors. So it's exact same thing. Flywheel moves this piston, compresses in the chamber, sends it up to the volume tank. Then you'd have an outlet port for your air to supply to the mines. Hydroelectric turbine, the Red Mount chairlift. 
St. Catharines, Ontario, phase three, 450 volts, 60 cycles, 58 amps, croaker wheel. This is all, looks like all chairlift stuff, the teeth on the gears, the red chairlift. One of the ways they would transport ore was by aerial tramway, gravity tram. Ore supplies sometimes people between high elevations or bins. At the base, the ore would be loaded onto the wagons, trains, trucks, to the smelters. Very cost effective, it's just gravity. You can see the frame with the shiv, the tower, and it would just go up the mountain. And one bucket would be loaded coming down, and it was just gravity fed, gravity fed tram. You can see little ore buckets. You can imagine riding in one of those though, eh? Like being a, uh, being a miner, getting to work every day in that. But you can see the shivs there. This is the tower. They'd load it from the head frame onto the tram, take the tram down to here, and then load it into whichever method of transportation it was going. Little carts. So, oh, this is a drift. They're drifting here. Danger explosives. The blasting shack, little tram cart, wooden barrels. So this is the, this is where the magazine would be. The magazine is where you keep your explosives. So they would have had their magazine here. So this is drifting. This is what these compressors are being used for, right? Stoping is vertical, drifting is sideways, and then you got down. So this is the stoping drill, your throttle, you can meter your airflow, and you got the little bit with the protective cap on it. But. This is how they would do it, right? It'd be loud. Very, very loud here in that all day. Ah, the fire hall, yes. Really, really key, pivotal, pivotal thing. Ford Motor Company fire truck. Uh, really important, guys. This, all these old towns were built out of wood. Everything, everything was made out of wood. So you needed to have ways to fight fire um, that were effective. So otherwise the entire town would burn. Like one place would get on fire and the entire rest of the town would burn unless they could contain it. A lot of towns, it was Sandin actually was like that. There was a big fire in Sandin in like 1900 that completely decimated the town and they had to rebuild it. Caslow as well had a fire. This is ton like, it's really bad guys. Fire in these old wooden towns is really bad. You can see all the garb, the pumps, fire extinguisher, boots, hose reels from back in the day. They got fi big fire extinguisher there. Stick shift, good old stick. Probably four by four as well. These old trucks are so nice. I love these old trucks. Look how simple it is too. Easy to fix, right? Not, not, not like today, you got the computer, you throw a code and it's like, oh God, what what now, right? But um, yeah, we've got the ladders, old wooden ladders, that's nice. The steering wheel, let's see how much how high she go here. Oh yeah. One, two, three, four, high, low. Oh, it's got a PTO. Nice, okay, yeah, so. That's the gears. It's a four speed. It looks like to that, and that's high and low. That's your power takeoff. I think the other one's a parking brake. Old Ford fire truck. Rossland Fire Department. White, it's a white truck. Really, really cool though. West Kootenai Power. Packard truck. Oh, used by the Power and Light Company. This was the, the West Kootenai Power, this is the electrician's truck. West Kootenai Power and Light Company. Oh, it's quite the, I like, oh, this is a beauty. It's a beauty truck. 1917 Packard, one of the original vehicles used by the West Kootenai Power and Light Company.